right, well, welcome again, everyone. My name is Ashley. I am powerless over drugs and alcohol, and tonight I'm grateful to be able to choose recovery. Hey, guys. Do you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick my shoes off. Anybody mind if I do that? Just makes me a little bit more comfortable. All right, let's start this with some prayer tonight. Well, God, I just pray that you would just use this message to just glorify you. Lord, I pray that this message would fall upon ears of those that are ready to hear it. And God, we just thank you for being here with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So I've got a story to start us out with tonight. While I was in rehab and I was first getting sober, we were doing an exercise. And in this exercise, there were like family orientation type of questions. You know, like what was your parents' relationship like? How many siblings? That kind of thing. And I was totally prepared for those kind of questions. But then it got a little bit deeper and started asking questions I'd never really thought of. And one of the questions really caught me off guard. The question was, name your favorite memory of having fun with your mother. And for the life of me, I couldn't think of a single memory of having fun with my own mother. I mean, seriously, not one time my mother and I had had fun together. And I knew it couldn't be right, but I was just drawing a complete blank. So occasionally this sort of thing happens, and so I actually ended up in a complete emotional breakdown over this. I was distraught and I was really upset. It only happens occasionally, though. <laughs> See, my mom was around when I was a kid, sure, in the sense that she was physically there for most of my life. But my mother struggled with addiction and still does, just like me. So growing up, things were really, really rough due to her addiction. But surely, even with all the bad, there had to be at least one single happy, fun memory with my mother from my entire childhood, right? The director of the rehab saw my emotions and asked me to come to her office with her. She asked me what was wrong, and I explained to her why I was so upset. She listened, and then she asked me if I held any ill feelings towards my mother, any resentments, unforgiveness, or blame. And at first, I was like, no way. I know my mom did the very best that she could with what she had. The director was patient with me, though, and she asked me to spend some time praying about this. <clears throat> So from a place of willingness, I did. And I prayed about this for two days. And one day, I saw it finally. I saw my mother for the broken, hurt person she was. I cried, and at the moment, I was really unsure of what was happening. But I sat with it for a bit, and I realized what was happening was a softening of my heart and forgiveness taking place. And then all of a sudden, just like that, a memory came to my mind of my mother and I, I was about 10 years old, and we were in the kitchen just laughing and joking and having a great time. It was really nothing special at all, but we were having fun together, and it was a fun memory with my mom. And in that moment, I realized the unforgiveness I was holding on to, the blame I was putting on her, blocked my good memories with her. Gosh, what a terrible thing. I couldn't remember a happy time with my own mother because I was still holding on to pain and blaming her for my life being the way that it was. Unforgiveness was blocking me from happy memories with my mom. I was choosing to hold on to old, sad, tragic things versus remembering happy, joyful times in my life. The grudge I was holding on to blinded me. It left me only seeing the bad in the relationship with my mother. So at the beginning of the year, we kicked off Choose Recovery with a lesson on living out love. And as a CR team, we decided that this, this is what this year is going to be all about, about living out love. And so one of the ways that we can live out love is through forgiveness. And so I realized that this may be a really, really hard subject to talk about. And I don't want to miss that fact. I don't want to miss the fact that forgiveness isn't easy. Actually, forgiveness can be one of the hardest things there is, especially when you've truly been hurt by people. And guys, I get it. I've had a fair share of hurts in my own life. Some of us have been hurt by parents or other family members, by ex-boyfriends or girlfriends or divorce. Some of us have been seriously, seriously hurt by people physically in all kinds of different ways. We've had our trust betrayed, promises broken, and expectations not met. And I know the thought of forgiving someone who has hurt you so deeply may be very hard to hear but I don't want you to stop listening just yet. So as we move forward through the rest of 2021, living out love, this might be a part of this for some of us. Some of us, some of the unforgiveness we've been holding on to for a long period of time, we may not even see how this unforgiveness is hurting us, 
But just like in the situation with my mom, I was unable to live out love with my mother until I was able to forgive her. You may not be able to see how this unforgiveness is on your life. You may be sitting here having no idea. Sometimes we push down the hurt as a defense mechanism. So I thought I'd give you some science tonight that I, I learned through Google and my own personal experiences, so they're not scientifically proven, but whatever, um, that you may be holding on to some unforgiveness. And those signs are if you're bitter or resentful, you're having trouble connecting with people or loving people, you're seeming to only remember the bad things, feeling disconnected spiritually, feelings of anger regularly, depression or anxiety. Now I'm gonna admit to you guys that I've struggled with all of these at some points in my life, and some of them very recently. <laughs> I'm not joking though when I say that my recovery and my relationship with Jesus has suffered because of this. Have you guys ever heard the expression that anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die? Yeah? It's true. Anger, unforgiveness, resentment, all those things are poison to us, to our spirituality, to our relationships with God and with other people. And it's poison to our peace of mind. The Bible has all sorts of scriptures about forgiveness and why we should do it. Here's one of them. Read it with me. It's going to be on the screen. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God and Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. So besides having to deal with all the terrible things that we just talked about a minute ago, when we don't forgive, there's another huge reason we should forgive. And Paul talked about it in this scripture that we just read. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And it's often said that those who won't forgive are forgetting what they've been forgiven for. Jesus came down to this earth. He was born in bad conditions, persecuted, mocked, betrayed, and ultimately killed on a cross for our forgiveness. That is a huge price, one that we can never pay, understand, or understand. With all this in mind, how can we not forgive one another? We all individually know our shortcomings that put Jesus on that cross. And I, for one, know that I have no room to judge anything else that anybody else could possibly do. So there's this story in the Bible that, that Jesus tells that illustrates this very well. It's going to be on the screen, and I'm going to read it for us because it's really long, so just hang in there. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him for the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay back the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, you, I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me, and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? Matthew 18, 23 through 33. So what Jesus is talking about here is a guy who owed a huge debt. To put it in perspective, the guy who was forgiven his debt of 10,000 talents would have had to work 200,000 years at minimum wage to pay off this debt. Oh, holy cow. Since the average person lives 199,950 years less than this, I'd say this debt is impossible to pay off. Not even 10 generations later could this debt have been paid off. Now the other guy, who the first dude wouldn't forgive, who owed 100 denarii, well, that was the equivalent to about four months' worth of work. See, you, see, so you see, we are the first guy, every single one of us. We owed a debt that we would never be able to repay. But God, in his mercy, sent his son to relieve us of that debt 
to settle the score and to make us even. And now while I was reading this and talking about this, if you thought to yourself, wow, how can that dude who was forgiven all that do that to that other guy? <laughs> Don't be so judgy of him. Because when you and I refuse to forgive, we are that guy. I heard once that holding on to offense or unforgiveness is like saying the other person still owes you something. We are holding out on clearing them of the debt until they pay us back whatever it is we think that we are owed. Sometimes that may be money or time, or sometimes it's even just an acknowledgement of their own wrongs. Sometimes we just simply won't forgive until someone admitted out loud and how much they hurt us. Well, listen, I totally understand this, and I have been guilty of this myself. When we do this, we have forgotten how much we've been forgiven for. Can you imagine for a minute that God had a list of all of our wrongs we would ever do, and before he let Jesus go to the cross, he held out until we admitted our wrongs? <laughs> that would be really terrible, as well as impossible. Listen, we are imperfect people, and chances are, before we leave here tonight, we will think, feel, say, or do something that needs some forgiven. Am I right? So here's the other thing. That person who you believe owes you something, you want to know what? Jesus already paid the price for them too, so haha, joke's on you. <laughs> they too are the beloved of God and a person of worth and a child of God. They are a cog pow just as much as you are one. So now we've talked about why we should forgive. So now we're going to answer the question, how do I forgive? So the first one is going to be taking an inventory of our hurt. So in this part, we are going to talk about taking responsibility as part of the way to forgive. So let me just start out by saying this. Sometimes we have no part. In those hurts where we were a victim, there is no part to own. For these types of hurts, we can also do an inventory, though. But this is a different kind of inventory. In this inventory, we acknowledge the hurts putting it on paper and accepting it for what it is, a painful part of our past. Sometimes we stuff these hurts and unforgiveness so far down that we pretend they don't even exist anymore. And it does. It sticks with us until we've forgiven them. Dealing with pain is needed to forgive in these situations. But please don't do this alone. This program is never meant to be worked alone. Find a sponsor or a friend who can walk through this with you. Sometimes, though, just sometimes, I don't know, at least for me, we cause our own problems we have with other people, and then we do further damage by blaming them for the things that we've caused. In Alcoholics Anonymous, we use the book that we call The Big Book. This was a book written by a group of recovered drunks for recovering drunks, and it was written in the late 1930s. But since it was first written, People with all kinds of problems have found recovery in the pages of this book, and it's useful to anyone with any problems. So on page 62, it says this, and it's going to be on the screen. Driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity, we step on the toes of our fellows, and they retaliate. Sometimes they hurt us, seemingly without provocation. But we invariably find that at some point in the past, we have made decisions based on self, which later place us in a position to be hurt. So how does an inventory help? Well, at the end of the line, after we talked about the who, the why, the what, we talk about our part and our fourth step. Where did we go wrong in the situation? What I'm talking about here is the inventory process that we go through in step four. If you're new and you don't know what I'm talking about, I've got some advice. Get a sponsor and work with them and you'll find out. In the meantime, just look to see if you had a part in the problem. When I look at my part, I see that even if they may have seemed to have hurt me for no reason, that wasn't really true. They, too, may have been hurt by my own actions. And, of course, I want to be forgiven for my part. And if I'm going to ask for forgiveness, I should probably give it in return. We don't want to be like that guy in the Bible story who wouldn't forgive. So the second way that we can forgive is realize the other person has issues, too. So in the big book that we talked about earlier, there's another, pa there's another um, passage that I'm going to read for us. In that state of wrongdoing, fancied or real, I'm sorry, in that state, the wrongdoing of others, fancied or real, had the power to actually kill. How could we escape? We saw that these resentments must be mastered, but how? 
We could not wish them away any more than we could alcohol. Though we did not like the symptoms and the way they disturbed us, like ourselves, they were sick too. We asked God to help us to show them the same tolerance, pity, and patience that we would cheerfully grant a sick friend. When a person offended, we said to ourselves, this is a sick man. How can I be helpful to him? God, save me from being angry. Thy will be done. When we are asking others to forgive us, we look at our intentions and the situation. Most of us don't intend to be bad people, but we have issues like addictions, afflictions, and compulsive behaviors that keep us from always acting like our good intentions that we have. Now listen, what I'm talking about here is not referring to the evil that has been done to us. True that some people are truly awful and don't have any good intentions at all and have seriously hurt others. I realize this and I know this personally to be true. However, even these people, we need to forgive. Remember, holding on to stuff like this is just like drinking poison. And in the end, it's us who is hurt even more when we hold on to this stuff. Another way we can forgive others is to pray for the person. All right, so I'm just going to get real with you all for a second. If you're like me, you may think, sure, I'll pray for them. I'll pray they get hit by a truck, right? Ha, <laughs> oh, crap, did I say that out loud? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, guys. I know I'm not the only one who thought this when their sponsors told them to pray for somebody that had hurt them. What I mean, though, is that prayer has a way of changing things. Our attitude, our perspective, and our heart. And a lot of times when we are unwilling to let go of a harm done to us, a change is needed that no human can make for us. This is something we need to get with God on. He alone has the power to soften our hearts towards someone who has hurt us. So if you're not sure how to pray for someone who has hurt you, it was recommended to me to pray for them as if I was praying for someone I loved with all my heart. And an example of this for me would be my children. When I pray for them, I don't hold back. I ask God to bless them in every possible way on earth and in heaven. I pray that they would grow in the understanding of God's infinite and unconditional love for them. I pray that they would come to know God in a powerful and personal way and that would and that they would feel God's loving arms around them right now in this moment. And those kind of prayers change things. You may ask, why for I pray for that? Why should I pray for that person? They don't deserve it. But oh my friends, neither do you. Neither do your loved ones. Remember the mercy that you received. Remember again what you have been forgiven for. God's desire is that no one should leave this earth without knowing him, even that person. God's desire is for them to be forgiven, freed, and for all God. And as God's children, we should desire that for everyone too, even that person. So when we pray for them, we are reminding ourselves that they too are the beloved of God, that we, like them, have not, been, have not been given what we deserve, and thank God for that. So guys, the point is, we've all been hurt. We all have people in our lives we just don't want to forgive. You are not alone. But remember, when we won't forgive, we are hurting ourselves. Just like that story I told you guys about my mom in the beginning, I was the one who was missing out by not forgiving her. I was the sad, hurt one who couldn't remember a good time with my own mom. Oh, and I don't want to live like that anymore. So, I challenge all of you this week. That's right, there's homework. (laughs) I challenge you all to take some steps towards forgiving someone this week. Get with a sponsor or an accountability partner. Do an inventory. Pray for that person and do it this week. Your life and your heart are sure to change if you do. So guys, this whole forgiveness thing, this is a great practical way to start carrying out our vision of living out love for the rest of 2021. We can't love others while we are still holding on to debts that we think they owe us. Let go of that pain, that hurt, and that grudge. Let's finish off the rest of this year in a new way. Clean slate, no one owes us a thing. Let's live out love through offering forgiveness this week. 
What do you guys say? Are you willing to try this with me? And that's all I'm really asking, is that you're willing to try it. And guess what? That's all that's really required to make a start. All right, let's say this out loud. Make a declaration for this week. Say it with me. It's going to be on the screen. This week, I'll live out love by offering forgiveness to those who have hurt me. All right, let's say that one more time because you guys weren't, you guys weren't with me enough on that one. All right? <laughs> this week... I'll live out love by offering forgiveness to those who've hurt me. <sighs> so like I said before, I don't, want to, I don't want to miss the fact tonight that forgiveness is really hard. This is one of those things that before recovery, if I walked into a church or anywhere and they started talking about forgiveness, I turned off. I wasn't listening anymore because I was hurt by a lot of people. And I just didn't want to hear it. They didn't deserve forgiveness, and that's just the way I felt. And you can stay living like that if you'd like. That's up to you. You can drink the poison until it kills you. But there's, a, there's so much better of a way to live. God offers us a way to forgive people who've hurt us. He offers us a way to live in freedom. And part of that is forgiveness. And so if you're here tonight and you're still like, no, I don't think I can do it. That's okay. You can pray for the willingness to want to forgive. <laughs> God is good like that. If you just say, God, I don't, I don't really even want to forgive, and I don't want to want to forgive. You say, God, help me to want to want to forgive. And if you're here tonight and you do want to forgive, but you're just not sure that you can, <laughs> it's just not true. God wants forgiveness for all of his children. That's why he sent his son here to die on the cross so that we can be forgiven, so that we can give that forgiveness to other people in our lives and so that we can love them like he's loved us. And so no matter what you have going on tonight, if it's yourself that you need to forgive or a person who's hurt you or anything, whatever's going on, whatever kind of unforgiveness is sitting with you, there's a, there's a way. And so the band's gonna come back up and they're gonna, they're gonna do a song. And in that song, we're going to sing about God being a way maker. And so I promise you, if you're unsure, just sing this tonight. Sing this song. Believe it for yourself. Believe it for the forgiveness that you owe somebody, that you owe yourself, that God is going to make a way. And so we're going to open up some spots on the altar. And you can come up here and you can pray or you can stay in your seats. This is a personal thing between you and God, but this is a really important thing. We don't want to continue drinking poison. I couldn't continue drinking poison and recover. There was no way that was going to happen. So I just invite you tonight, wherever you are, if you're at home, here in person, wherever you are, pray for willingness to forgive. Pray for God to help you to see how to forgive that person who's hurt you. Whatever it is that you need help with tonight in this path of forgiveness, I've given you some steps, but there's nothing that can help you like God in this forgiveness journey. So let's go ahead and pray, and then we're going to do one more song. Well, God, we just thank you so much for this. Um, we thank you so much for this night, Lord. We just thank you that you came down here and that you forgave us. You gave us, forgave us for everything that we could ever do and everything we've already done and everything we will do. And Lord, I just pray that tonight that you would help us to open up our hearts, to soften our hearts towards those people who've hurt us. Lord, I pray that whatever, whatever is standing in the way between us and that forgiveness, God, that you would just remove it right here in this place tonight. God, we know that it's what you want for us, for our recovery, and for the other person. We know that you love them and you want it for them too. And so God, help us to get out of the way. Help us to trust you in this forgiveness process. In Jesus' name, amen.